Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Now there is a lot of different things that I want to be working on and uh, I need more time to work on some more major projects. Uh, the major projects actually take a lot of time to put together and stuff like that so to make sure that there is enough time to actually fill both the building series and the project series and stuff like that I want to make sure that there is some you know time for me to take a little bit of time off so there's more time to work on those particular workspaces and stuff so I wanted to just do kind of quick videos like this to kind of explain the process of actually developing a mod and some key features of things what to avoid things like that so I wanted to start with versioning because I think there's a lot of um, useful information that could be used for a lot of mods and stuff like that so I wanted to cover that first. Now we're on the Forge website for Forge Docs and it lists the actual system that they suggest here. Now generally uh, mod development is structured as major, minor, and patch. Uh, MCreator suggests to use this method but Forge actually uh, suggests to use a little bit different method. So Minecraft version dash major mod so basically the major mod version and then the uh, major API so that's completely different from the major it's something else we'll go into that a little bit more in just a second followed by the minor and then patches so patch are basically bug fixes so let's kind of explore the each and one each one of those and we'll kind of explain how it works so first thing is the most important part is when one of those numbers changes all previous lower ones are updated so if we were to come out with a minor update the patches would reset to zero and then we would increase the number to a minor like increase the number of one by one for the minor update if it was an API change then we would basically set the minor and patch to zero and then we would increase the API change to plus one. If it was a major update then we would reset the three on the right to zero and then we would basically set the major mod up to one. So if there's a Minecraft change for basically updating the mod uh, for a Minecraft version then the major mod version would actually update to plus one and everything below would also get reset. So that's basically how the the counting system works for the actual mod. So uh, I'll do a diagram in just a second uh, to show you what I mean, but we'll cover that in just a second. So there's a few different parts in that. Uh, the major API is not so much needed uh, for M Crater. You can still do that if you want, but um, you don't really necessarily need to add that particular part. You can just stack that under your major mod uh, mod version and it should work just fine. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how the structure would work. So we have our Minecraft version. So this would be our Minecraft version. So MC dash and then our major version. So if we started with our first version, it would be 1.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Now this is if you're using the major build, so you could remove that and you could just have the three digits like this. Uh, Forge recommends doing four digits like that though. Um, other sites might have certain criteria for actually setting it up, but you can have your you know actual builds and stuff labeled as this particular one in your when you release your jar. So the other thing is the when you create a patch the number over here will increase by one and that if that's if you come out with a patch after your first build so for example if your first build is one and then you need to patch something then this number increases so say if we come out with some extra blocks and stuff like that um, anything that adds more content to the game but not removes it then we would increase this number by one and we would reset the patch to zero so that's basically increased by one and then the patch is reset the API if you were to increase the API then this would basically increase by one any patches and um, other versions below that would be set to zero 
and then you would basically set that to one. If you upgrade your Minecraft version, so basically your Minecraft version is 1.16 or 1.15.2 and you're on this particular version, then what you would do is you would basically like if you were to upgrading to 1.16 then you would basically 1.16.5 and then you would change that to 2 and all the other numbers down here would be set to 0. So that's basically how the structure format that Forge recommends to basically use. Uh, let's go back to the website and we'll kind of read out what they mean by all those different versions now. So again the number on the right so if we open this up again and then we go here I'll just draw something so it's easier to see. So this version right here is basically our patches. So anything that is just strictly bug fixes or um, basically fixes to fix broken features and stuff like that, that would be your patch number. So it won't have any major changes, no new content, just basic fixes. The second number right here is your minor updates. So basically adding items, blocks, tile entities, etc. Adding new mechanics and basically changing the public methods. So uh, for example, any changing blocks in a specific tag would be under this kind of category. So in short, uh, adding content, not removing it or changing uh, not removing it, but you can change certain properties of those blocks. This would fit under the minor changes. The mod API, so this is our next digit over, so this one right here. This is our changing the order of variables or nums. I'm not sure what nums are. I'm not, I don't code, so I don't understand that, but I do know variables, basically variables. This alone is not too important unless you change the actual name of those variables. So things like tags, uh, MBT tags like that, um, or MBT variables, those, if you change the name of those variables, this would basically mod count as a mod um, API change. The um, changing of return value types. So if you change the return value of a certain return block, then this would basically count as an API change removing public methods altogether. So if you were to uh, remove support for cross mod support, things like tags, uh, tag names, um, things like that, it would fit more into this category alone. Um, depending if you remove the tag altogether, if you're renaming the tag name and then fixing everything under a different tag, um, tag itself, then that would kind of fit into this category, but you're also technically removing things too. So that would be under the major mod group. So we'll, the last number is basically the two version that we have here. And what this does is it removing items, blocks, tile entities, etc. So this can in also include tags, uh, changing or removing previously existing mechanics. So basically removing or changing mechanics like procedures, this would fall under the major update as well. Uh, up upgrading to a new Minecraft version. So again, like in our example, we had this to 1.15.2 and then we upgraded to 1.16.5 and then we upgraded this number right here. So that basically is what that part does. The last part that we have here is the mod version. So right here is the mod version. If we go to Forge, it says always matches the Minecraft version of the mod it's for. So in our case, if we upgraded to our 1.16, then this would be for the mod version itself. So basically that's how it's they recommend setting it up. Uh, Minecraft basically suggests using the major, minor, and patch version, but um, you could probably get away with just using the Minecraft version, major mod, and minor, so the minor version, and the patch. Uh, you can leave out basically the major API changes if you really wanted to. It's not really too important to have that particular part in, but um, if you wanted to 
save some extra work that you don't re really need that extra part there. You could just focus on these two and these two after. So hopefully that kind of explains it. I'll make sure to link to this versioning page for Forge so you guys can kind of get an idea on how the structure of this all works out. Um, hopefully I have cleared some of the versioning questions that some of the community has and are unsure on how to format their numbers and stuff like that. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Uh, someone might be able to reply and let you know um, reply to your question and stuff like that. Outside of that, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.